We have defined joy. We've looked at it as a supernatural encounter. And of course, it's really important because there are some secrets. And we have looked at a lot of secrets. The Bible has a lot to say about what you think. There's been lots of opportunities to receive and understand that worrying is a complete waste of time. Somebody said amen, amen. and I even defined it for you. And there's other very key secrets I gave you in Philippians, the fourth chapter, learning how to appreciate the small things, learning how to surround yourself with positive people, learning how to laugh more. I gave you so many joy scriptures. I mean, golden nuggets of joy. Last week we went over so many. Then we talked about wisdom for increasing our joy. And the number one wisdom that we talked about was the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that was our focus last Sunday. Amen. So the Lord wants us to have joy. Say joy. joy. Amen. Hallelujah. We did a thirsty, thirsty study this week on YouTube, and that was, that was put out there for everybody to hear. We actually had a premiere at 7 o'clock, understanding what zaps our joy. This is really important, okay? We talked about the danger of complaining, lateness, and procrastination, and gossip, and all these things, approval seeking, and not keeping your word. These are all things that we talked about on Thursday night in our Thirsty Thursday study. Uh, we couldn't have you over our house because we had out-of-town visitors, but we did that instead, and it was the Word of God still went out. Amen. Amen. Today, and I'm bringing you up to speed quickly as to where God is speaking to us concerning supernatural joy in our life. And one of the things that the Lord has showed me and made it very clear to me, that is attachment to circumstances. We get attached to certain things, and it could be something that maybe you have maybe some affinity to or whatever happened in your life or maybe something that somebody did to you to hurt you or whatever it may be. And the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength not the joy of our circumstances. Some, can somebody say amen? amen? Learn to detach from circumstances. That would include people, situations that you have to deal with, maybe money or whatever the situation may be. And learn to handle change with finesse. Amen. God wants us to learn to handle change. Amen. In our life. I have a number of scriptures that I want to give you here this morning that will really help you, and I know they really help me, because the Word of God is where the power lies. Amen. I want more of this joy in my life. Amen. Amen. And all the things we've talked about over the last several weeks, it's, it's for everybody to have. Anybody can enjoy this. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, very important. In everything give thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, everybody, say that with me. Say, in everything. Amen. In everything. Amen. Oh, let's do it again. In everything. Amen. There we go. Now we got something going here. Say, in everything, Amen. give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, I'm going to be thankful for some things, but the things I don't like, I'm not going to be thankful for. I'm going to murmur and complain. I'm going to have a bitter spirit and attitude. I'm going to talk to other people about it. I'm going to gossip and spread some bad news. Come on, guys. Amen. The Lord wants us to be free from all of this. Amen. I'm talking about real freedom. We're here celebrating freedom on Independence Day, and there's nothing more free than to be free from the works of the enemy in your life. Amen. Amen. John 16, 33. Now all these scriptures will be available to you. You know I always make sure you get them all. But you can jot them down if you like. John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you might have peace. Amen. Say peace. peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Amen. There will be difficult things. And nobody promised you in the word of God that there wouldn't be a problem. Amen. But he said, I will give you my grace. 
to get through the problem. Amen. Daniel didn't go around the lion's den. He went through the lion's den. He didn't go around. The three Hebrew children didn't go around the burning fiery furnace. They went through the fiery furnace. Amen. Jesus Christ didn't go around the cross. He went through the cross. And God's grace was sufficient. Oh God, give me strength to preach here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have difficult moments. You will have tribulation. Amen. But take heart because I have overcome the world. I have said these things to you that in me you might have the peace of God. The peace of God. I know you're at peace with God. If you're saved, you're at peace with God. But the peace of God is something totally different. Say, I've got the peace of God today. Amen. Hallelujah. Take heart. I have overcome the world. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all of your care upon Him. For He cares for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, does this mean something to you, or is this just a good service? Well, it's, it's cool in here. It's 90 degrees outside. It's only 70 in here, so this is the place to be. No, well, it better be more. <laughs> Come on, guys. I want you to laugh. Let's enjoy ourselves this morning. Amen. <laughs> Casting all of your care upon Him because He cares for you. James 1, 2-4, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and difficulties in your life. What does the Scripture say there? Count it all joy. When's the last time you did that? When things went wrong, did you count it all joy at that point? Or did you go into a mode of murmuring and complaining? Amen. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen. This is an offer to you guys. Of having some supernatural encounter with God, which we call a little three letter word, joy. And that's a supernatural encounter with God. Hallelujah. Come on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, say the trying of my faith, worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, knowing that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I hope these scriptures are affecting you half as much as they affected me. I can't sleep at night when I have these scriptures on my mind. I was awake about midnight last night and I was going over some things and I got up early this morning and the Lord just gave me so much scripture, scripture, scripture. I was in the Word of God from, I guess, between five and six. And the Word of God was just transforming me on the inside. See, that's what the Word of God does. It transforms you on the inside. It's awesome. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to that throne of grace. Come on. Who wants to come boldly to the throne of grace this morning that we may obtain His mercy and find grace to help in every time of need. It doesn't matter what the difficulty may be. My God is bigger. Somebody said my God is bigger. Oh God, help these people to get this, Lord. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Word of God is its own defense, guys. You don't need to hear what I've got to say. You just got to hear what God has to say. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8.28 We're talking about Getting away from circumstances and the danger of having attachment to circumstances. That's what we're talking about here this morning. We're talking about in the segment of our message here, joy zappers, right? I started that on Thursday night in our Thursday, Thursday teaching. And went over a number of things there that can zap your joy. And does every day. Every day. 
This is just another one. An attachment to circumstances. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good. Are you convinced of that? When something doesn't go right. When something goes wrong in your life. Are you convinced that because you're a child of God. And you love God. It's going to work together for good. It has to work together for good. It has to. Because the word of God says it will. (laughs) How convinced are you of this? Or are you still battling this in your soul? Don't battle it. It's already done. It's already done. (sighs) Oh God. Oh, I just feel this so... I just have a passion in my soul right now that's really high. The Lord told us to pray for our nation and our government, our law enforcement and our troops, this virus, and then to pray for all of us in our church body. Everything we did today was ordered by God. That was ordained in the throne room of God. Is All I did was just follow orders. I had nothing to do with it. The Lord just said, do it, and we did it. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's John 14 and 1. And John 3, 16, the beloved scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Boy, I'll tell you, if I didn't preach one other thing this morning and you just took that one verse home, it would be enough to set you free this week. Hebrews 13.5 Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never... Leave you nor forsake you. So for you to pray, Lord, don't leave me, that's an incorrect prayer. Do you understand that? That's an incorrect prayer. He has already said he will never leave you. May the words that come out of my mouth always align with the Word of God. And when they don't align with the Word of God, that's an incorrect prayer. Amen. 1 Timothy 6.6 6, But goodness with contentment is great gain. Amen. And I do believe the Lord wants us to have not a passive spirit, but a spirit of contentment. Amen. Amen. So what do we talk about over the last few minutes here? Very important. The attachment to circumstances. The Lord wants to set you free from all of those attachment to circumstances. Amen. Amen. Number two this morning. And this is big. Living in the past. Our past can keep us from experiencing the joy of now. Did you know that? Did anybody hear what I said? I don't want you to miss this. Focusing on your past, this is important, will keep you from experiencing the joy of now. How many people do you know that just live in the past all the time? It's what we used to do. It's what happened back in 1980. Or this happened in this. And you're living in the past all the time. Hey, I'm all for for holding on to fond memories. That's a good thing. And if you can learn something from the past, that's a good thing. But don't live in the past. The Lord wants to give you something so much better. Amen. He has plans for you that are all good so that your future can be bright. I don't know, Pastor, that may apply to some other people, but it probably don't apply to me. Well, if that's what you're thinking, then guess what? It will never apply to you. Number two, and this is really big, this is really important, living in the past. Our past can keep us from experiencing the joy of now. Treasure fond memories, absolutely, I highly recommend that that encourage and bring you into a joyous state of mind. But let go of those past memories that are joy zappers. 
those things that happened to you in the past that are stealing your joy today. What in your life happened 10 years ago, 5 years ago, maybe even just 5 days ago? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is that happened, if you are living in that, you are allowing the devil to steal your joy from today. I got a lot of scripture to back up. Come on, Pastor, where are you coming from with this one? No, I think it's a dangerous thing to live too much in the past. Amen. Always learn from the past mistakes. Oh, absolutely. But choose to go forward. Somebody said, I choose. Somebody said, I choose to go forward. I say this all the time. Carol's my witness. The should'ves and could'ves will kill you. The should'ves and could'ves. What you should have done, and what you would have done, and what you could have done. And what you, I mean, if you live in the should'ves and could'ves, I'm telling you right now, it'll, it'll steal every bit of energy right out of you. Amen. Say, God has a plan for me. And that's what I want to get in tune with. Come on. We can't change what happened 10 years ago. We cannot change what happened 5 years ago. We can't change that. Amen. That's right. But we can change what's going to happen going forward. Yes. You have a lot of impact over that. Yes. Come on, who's with me this morning? Amen. Isaiah 43, 18. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Come on, house of praise. Come on, grasp what I'm saying. I'm getting ready to do a new thing. And it shall spring forth. Do you not receive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and a river in the desert of your life. Oh, I just want you to get this so bad. Take this with you today. I got something new for you. Oh, I'm so excited about this. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Come on. The old has passed away. And behold, the new is come. We're talking about joy zappers this morning. And this one is living in the past. Romans 13, 12, the night is far gone. The day is at hand. God says, the night is past. Weeping may endure for the night, but in the morning there is joy. I'm not talking about a 24-hour period here. We're talking about not chronos. We're talking about kairos. I've taught you the difference between chronos and kairos. Chronos is a measurement of time in minutes and hours and seconds and years and decades, etc. Kairos is a Greek word that measures not in, in minutes and seconds. It measures life in what? The time of a moment. Something, a, a moment of your life. That could represent a year. It could represent ten years. It could represent anything. A kairos moment. Remember I taught you, I had a message about two months ago during the lockdown that this is our Kairos moment. Go back and listen to that. It's on, it's on YouTube. Don't miss it. It's so easy to hit a YouTube link and listen to this again. I can't imagine why you wouldn't do it. Romans 13, 12. The night is far gone. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Somebody said light. Luke 9, 62, Jesus said to them, no one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow, where'd you get that, Pastor? Uh, Jesus said it. Jesus is the one that said that. That if he has brought you so far and you choose to look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Ooh, 
Boy, that sounds harsh. Well, I guess you need to talk to Jesus about that because that's, that's who said it. Amen? I think he's trying to make a really strong point. Amen? No one puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Philippians 3.13 Behold, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. This is the Apostle Paul. Remember his background? He was not a nice guy. The Apostle Paul was highly educated and very wealthy. But he hated Christians. He hated the work of Christ. And he worked against the first church. He hailed men and women into prison. Into the lions. He was not a good person, but he thought he was doing God's service. But this is the Apostle Paul talking now. He says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He was saying it's time to stop living in the past. It's time to get a fresh new grip on what God has for me now. Every one of the people in this congregation this morning, I know we're a small group yet, it's, it's like a steering the Titanic to get the church back in motion again. And we have this large room we're using for safe distancing and all that. But it feels funny to have a small group. We'd like to have more people here. Amen. However, the Lord will bring them all back eventually. God has never given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Amen. So if you feel fear, that's not of God. That's not of God. Oh, wait a second, Pastor. No, I didn't say you shouldn't be wise. I just said you shouldn't have a spirit of fear. Amen. So if you have fear, that's never of God. Amen. You with me? Yes. Is anybody with me? Yes. <laughs> oh, I am, Ellie, I am so pumped up this morning. I, I just really felt the Holy Spirit said, this is what you need to do. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me the time to deliver what you want. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Who said that? Ed, thank you, Ed. Amen. All right, here's 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. So let's not get all upset about what we did to mess up. Come on. Oh, pastor, I've really messed up. I've done this. I've done that. I, I've wasted my time. Well, God wants to redeem your time. Amen. I've wasted my money. Well, God wants to redeem your money. You understand that? I've wasted this relationship. God wants to redeem that relationship. Hallelujah. And whatever he does, Jesus is the redeemer. And I know that my redeemer liveth. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody praise God in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, may everybody in this hotel hear the sound of my voice this morning. That Jesus is alive and he is the redeemer. Amen. And he wants to redeem every part of your life. Every part. Every part. Not just your soul. Every part. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Colossians 3, 2. Set your mind on things that are above. Amen. And not on the things that are on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. For the things that are on the earth are only temporary. Say temporary. But the things that I can't see have eternal value. Say eternity. I want to live in the realm of eternity. Say eternity. God lives in this realm called eternity. He is not in the realm of time and space like we are. He lives in a realm called eternity. And there is no time, there is no space where God lives. That's why I say God sees the day you're born. He sees the day your body expires. And He sees everything in between all at the same time. That's who we're praying to, guys. The omniscient God. 
He sees you being born out of your mother's womb. And remember, he had plans for you before you were born. That's what the word of God says. Before I even had a breath in my lungs, you had a plan for me. He had a plan for you, Ed, before you were born. Before you were born. Now, some might say, well, that didn't work out too good. Well, sometimes we mess up the plans, don't we? Our disobedience can mess up the plans. You understand what I'm saying? The plans, obviously, are, must be in accordance with the will of God. So we refuse. I mean, God had a plan for Adam and Eve, and they really messed up. Hello? God had a plan for King David. He messed up. He had a plan for Elijah. He messed up. Come on. We all mess up. But there is redemption. Amen. Hallelujah. Say there is redemption. And that's what I'm here to declare this morning. That there is a redemptive spirit in this church. Hallelujah. And you need to invite somebody to this church. You need, because the glory of God. I believe with all my heart that people can be redeemed and set free. You're talking about joy. We haven't even begun to understand joy yet. But we're going to. Amen. We're going to. Say we're going to. Oh, come on. i got a couple more scriptures here. Are you okay with that? Yes. Revelations 21.4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be any more mourning or crying or pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hebrews 8.12 For I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins. I will remember their failures. I will remember where they messed up. I will re- No more! Say no more! So I don't want to hear anybody say Pastor, I really messed up. Well, if that's what you're going to say to me, you didn't hear a word that I said this morning. Will you please go out through those double doors and come back in again and listen, play back this sermon so you can hear what I said. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has wiped out my sins in the past. He has wiped out my sins in the present. He's even forgiven and wiped out my sins that I didn't even commit yet in the future. Say past, present, future. I am made clean in Christ. Woo! Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is what the same. Come on, say it with me. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I got one more point that I got to bring out here. Then I'll say, have a good Sunday. Go take a dip in your pool like I think I'm going to do. I'm telling you, it's hot out, isn't it? I went out this morning early. I thought, wow, it's really hot today. Amen. Thank God for AC. That was, that was invented in the throne room. Did you know that? <laughs> AC was invented in the throne room. They think General Electric invented or whoever he was. But it was invented in the throne room, guys. Amen. All right. Here's the last point and I'm done. The third point that I'm going to give you today, and this will wrap up what the Lord has given me concerning joy zappers. Here's one. Fear of the future. Living in hope of the future instead of fear. We make the choice to use our imagination to fuel either our faith or our fear. Did you know that? Come on, say this with me. You all know it. Faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God. That word rhema is the Greek word that's used there, not logos, it's the word rhema. So therefore, faith comes by hearing and hearing by what God is saying to you. That's what the word rhema means. It means a now word. A now word. Something you heard today that applies to today. It's always part of the logos, which is the entire counsel of God. However, a rhema is a now word. Say a now word. Now this is really important. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you will touch us, oh God, so that we will hear the now word, oh God, that you have for us here this morning. Say it's a choice that I make. I'm going to make a choice this morning of either receiving faith or fear. Because if faith comes by hearing and hearing by what God is saying, that means the opposite has to be true. Would you agree? The opposite has to be true. Fear comes by hearing and by hearing what the devil is saying. So you make a choice. Say, I will make a choice today. Amen. God has given you free will. Amen. So I have a choice to make. It's a choice that I will make today. Be hopeful and expectant of all the good things that the Lord can and will do for you. Amen. Somebody said amen. amen. Remember, he split the sea. And he wants to do it for you. What I said was from the heart of God. He split the sea. And he wants to do it for you. Second Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power. And of love. And of a sound mind. 1 John 4.18 there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out all fear. Do you know why? Because perfect love generates faith, and faith fights fear. That's why there is no fear in love. And if you have fear in your spirit, if you do have fear, you have a love deficiency. Amen. Hear what your pastor is saying. Oh, pastor, that sounds judgmental. No, it's not being judgmental at all. It's just the word of God. The Word of God simply says that faith and love go together. They can't work without each other. So if you are experiencing fear, you have a love deficiency. Amen. I had a whole sermon on love deficiencies a few years ago. And I, oh, I'm telling you, I had somebody, it was funny. How about that Sunday, hun? Somebody in our congregation here was doing this, pointing to his wife. <laughs> behind her back. It was so funny. You know, I was going about talking about love deficiencies and he was behind her back doing this. <laughs> I can still see him doing that. I won't tell you who it was. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. A love deficiency is a big problem. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. There is no fear in love. But perfect love cast out all fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So if you got a fear, you say, whoa, what's wrong with my love system here? Boy, there's something. I'm not forgiving somebody. Something's really radically wrong. <sighs> Amen. First Peter 5, 7 Oh, I give it to you before we give it to you again. Casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Oh, I'm about ready to wrap up. I said that before, didn't I? I'm almost true this time. Amen. Hold on. Mark 4. Mark 4. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him uh, some other little ships. And there arose a great storm. This was out on the Sea of Galilee. And, and we were there, and we know that it's, it's about 12, maybe 15 miles long. And it's about 7 or 8 miles wide. You can stand on the shore of Sea of Galilee and see the other side. Say. And it, it's not a huge body of water. But there is, a, there is a, a certain dynamic that storms really get bad. And it is about 200 feet in the middle deep, okay? So it's a dangerous place to be in a storm, amen? This is what happened here. And there arose a great storm of wind, 
and the waves beat into the ship, that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. God, Jesus don't care about my situation. He's asleep. He's asleep. And he was on a pillow. I wonder if he was using that MyPillow.com guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, MyPillow.com. And he arose and he re... No, the first thing he said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What matter of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 112 and 7. He shall not be afraid of evil things. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Amen. Third John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. James 1, 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Pastor, where would you get these scriptures? From the Bible. One more. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. The three joy zappers that we talked about this morning, and we started it on Thursday, Thursday. Go back to that YouTube if you didn't already. The very first one, let me go back. Attachment to circumstances, living in the past, fear of the future. Amen? that help anybody this morning? Well, I sure hope so. But I preached with all of my might this morning. And I just believe God wants to do good things for us. Amen? My God, hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, as we continue to sing this blessing, O oh God. Father, may we speak it over our families and children, O oh God. This is so important. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Emily, come on up here and dismiss this fine congregation. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. We will go, Father, with this truth on our lips, O oh God, that you are a miracle worker. You are, Father, the promise keeper. And you are the light in the darkness. And God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Father, we just come before you now. Amen. To continue to praise, Amen. worship, and adore you. Hallelujah. Jesus, it is all about you. All about Jesus. And you are always in our now. Help us, Lord, to walk in the joy of the moment. And allow that joy that is Glory. you to just pour forth to this hungry, thirsty, Glory. dying world. Yes. Have your way. And allow yes. from this moment. From this, oh my God. this uh, experience yes, that we have just Hallelujah. encountered you, yes, Lord. that my this God. amazing joy of your uh, personality my God. to yes, pour Lord. forth from your people yes, with victory and joy and praise and wonderful testimonies Amen. of your goodness for Amen. our country, yes, Lord. Yes, for our Lord. state. Hallelujah. For our communities, for our families, Hallelujah. and for all our friends, poor, poor, Amen. Your home. Oh Amen. my God. Amen. Thank you, M. Amen. You are dismissed. Be blessed and have a wonderful, blessed Lord Sunday. Bless Amen. <laughs>